This tutorial shows you how to perform a Bayesian phylogenetic analysis using the software Mr. Bayes. The fact that this phylogenetic analysis is Bayesian means that you can specify some information that you know about the groups that you're finding the phylogenetic relationships of ahead of time. So for instance, if you know that one specimen is an outgroup to the others, you could specify that in the form of a prior probability. Or, as we will do here today, you can leave the default prior probabilities alone and you can proceed with the phylogenetic analysis as you would any other phylogenetic analysis. This tutorial assumes you are using Ubuntu Linux version 20.04 as your operating system. If you do not have Linux, you can emulate it on your Windows or Mac computer for free. See the show notes for details. In fact, I am emulating Linux right now on my Mac computer using VirtualBox. I have a VirtualBox virtual machine pre-configured with the software I will show you today, as well as other population genetics and ecological niche modeling software. See the show notes below for step-by-step -step instructions to download and hook up this virtual machine within your Windows or Mac computer. An important caveat, VirtualBox version 6.1 does not work on a Mac. It will not work with Ubuntu Linux on a Mac. In that case, you want to use an older version of VirtualBox, version 6.0. See the show notes below. This tutorial assumes you have the software Mr. Bayes and Figtree already installed on your machine. Or you can simply use the pre-configured virtual machine that I am demoing right now. We will be using an example file that comes with the Mr. Bay software, so there is nothing additional to download. Start by opening up a terminal window, which I have pinned to my favorites, or which you can find by searching your Linux machine down below. If you're using my virtual machine, I have Mr. Bay's installed in the inside of a folder inside of the bin directory uh, inside of my home directory. So I would type cd bin, and then within the bin directory I would type cd Mr. Bayes dash 3.2.7a, which is the name of the folder. There's no spaces in that. Now we have to go inside of the src subfolder. And now we can run Mr. Bayes dot slash mb. The file that we're going to be using is a file containing individuals of different primate species. And this file is in the Nexus file format. The Nexus file format is like FASTA or like FIML in that it's a file of individuals that you collected DNA from and the DNA sequences of each of those individuals. Or it could be protein sequences or something else depending upon your data. In our case, it's DNA sequences. We're going to type execute to open up the Nexus file. To find the file, we're going to open up a file explorer window, which I have pinned to favorites. We're going to navigate to the bin directory. We're going to navigate to our Mr. Base folder. We're going to navigate to examples. And here's the file, primates.nex. It has one DNA sequence each from many different primate species. So we're going to take that file and we will drag it into our terminal window. That way we have the whole path there so that Mr. Base can find the file. But don't hit enter yet. We have to get rid of the quotation marks for the purposes of this program. Go ahead and execute the command. The file has now been read into the Mr. Base program and is ready for a phylogenetic analysis to be run. We need to set some parameters to tell Mr. Base how to run the phylogenetic analysis on our data. We will do that by typing LSET, L-S-E-T space. LSET is the generic command for changing the settings for running Mr. Bayes. The first thing we will do is set NST equal to 6. What is NST? 
there's a good website which goes through these definitions, and I have a link to this website in the show notes below. NST is the number of substitution types. What this means is whether we are going to constrain individual base pairs to certain kinds of mutation rates, or whether we will let every single base pair nucleotide position in our sequence to have its own DNA mutation rate. In order to run a phylogenetic analysis, we need to make assumptions about the mutation rate. And mutation rates can be different for different positions in the nucleotide in the DNA sequence. We are going to allow every single position in our nucleotide sequence to have its own individual mutation rate. And uh, we're going to allow for those mutations to revert back. So if there was, if, if, if at some point in the history of this group there was a mutation that changed an adenine to a guanine, for instance, this model will allow for a guanine to mutate back to an adenine and for that to be reflected among other individuals in the sequence, that they now have the uh, original sequence again, but because of it's a, it's a reversion mutation back to the original. But there's other forms that we could use instead, uh, such as we could constrain all rates to be the same at all sites, or we could allow different types of mutations, transitions versus transversions, which have to do with whether a uh, a, a purine is being substituted for another purine, or if a purine is being substituted for a pyrimidine, uh, you could allow those mutations to uh, occur at different rates if you wanted to make that assumption. But we're just going to allow any particular site in our sequence to have a different mutation rate from any other site, and we're, we're allowing for reversion mutations to occur. The code for that is 6, and the setting, uh, the parameter for that is NST. So we're setting NST equal to 6. Now, the, the rate that we're using is an inverse gamma rate. So we're allowing every nucleotide position to have its own mutation rate, and that rate will be calculated using an inverse gamma uh, uh, form of a model. And there's other uh, mutation rates that you could investigate here. You can also determine which of these particular rates and uh, is the most appropriate for your data uh, by running a program such as JModelTest. So we use the LSET command to set some settings for our analysis. The first of those settings is the NST setting, which we set to code 6, which means we're letting, letting every single base pair position have its own mutation rate, and those mutation rates will be determined using an inverse gamma model. Now we need to set the uh, settings for the Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation. The basic idea here is that the phylogenetic analysis will try again and again to create the phylogenetic trees based upon uh, its, its equations. And every time it runs, it runs a little bit differently. This says that we are going to run that phylogenetic analysis 20,000 times. And every 100 times that it runs, we're going to sample the results and get the posterior probability out of that run, uh, one out of every 100 times. And those posterior probabilities will tell us how much confidence we have uh, in the phylogenetic relationships on our phylogenetic tree. If you were running a larger phylogenetic analysis, you would likely want, in other words, on more specimens, you would likely want to have a larger number of generations uh, and a more infrequent sampling frequency. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we will use these settings. It will not take long to run. Here's an important thing to look for. You need to wait until the analysis has reached an average standard deviation of split frequencies below 0.01. The number that we have here is 0.001, which is much smaller than 0.01. Because we've reached a number that is below the average standard deviation of split frequencies of 0.01, because we've reached an actual average standard deviation of split frequencies lower than that, we can end the analysis, meaning that it is finished. So if you were doing this on real data and you hadn't yet reached 0.01, you would want to click No here.
I mean, you would, I'm sorry, you would want to click yes here to continue with the analysis and run it some more. But because we have achieved a number below where we need it to be, we can stop the analysis and be finished. So because we have reached a number of 0 0.01 or lower, we can click no. So you need to type that in and hit enter. Now we need to generate some other summary statistics based upon the analyses that we just run. The first one is done by the sump command. And that generates some more files in our results folder that we may want to look at in, in the future. But the most important one we need to do is the sumt command, which will actually generate the one single phylogenetic tree based upon all of these simulations that sums everything up that we can then use in our publications or for whatever purpose we need it. Now, of course, it does a little phylogenetic tree here in the results, but that's not what I mean. We also have a data file that it gives us where we can, that we can then take into other software and, and we can look at those in, and we can look at that phylogenetic tree in a better format. To show you, we'll go ahead and do that right now. The first thing we need to do is exit Mr. Bayes, which you do by typing quit in the terminal window. Next, we're going to open up that phylogenetic tree that we generated in Mr. Bayes using a program called FigTree. To do that, open up File Explorer, which I have pinned to my favorites. Navigate to the home directory. If you're using my Ubuntu Linux machine, navigate to the bin directory. And there's the folder we need FigTree. So what we're going to do is back in our terminal window, you're going to type cd space and then drag this folder into the terminal window and then hit enter. Now we're going to type cd bin again because this program has its own bin folder. And now we're simply going to type fig tree. Now type file open. And we're going to navigate back to Mr. Bayes, which is in our home directory, in the bin folder, in the Mr. Bayes directory, and, it, and we were running it from the examples folder. So in here, the file that we just generated when we ran our phylogenetic analysis was this one here ending in .tre. So select that and click on open. And now we can see the phylogeny. Next, we need to show the node support labels, which will be in terms of posterior probabilities. To do that, click the button that says branch labels. Click the triangle on the side so that you can see all of the available options. Where it says display, click the drop down arrow and change the display from branch times to probability expressed as a percentage. So this shows us that with 100% probability, we know the relationships of all of the different species to one another. Now, usually a phylogenetic tree that you've generated in fig tree like this is not good enough quality for use in a uh, journal article uh, or a dissertation thesis. I have another tutorial, which I link to in the show notes below, show, giving you some ideas of how you can turn this into a publication ready phylogeny fig. Do note that that next tutorial that I'm linking to is different from the one that I developed for when you made a, phylo a phylogenetic analysis using a maximum likelihood based approach using PhiML. The output files you get from when, from when you do a phylogenetic analysis using PhiML and the output file you get from doing a phylogenetic analysis using Mr. Bayes are, are different and they need to be handled differently uh, in order to uh, make it so that you can then uh, make them into uh, publication ready phylogeny figures. All right, so there you have it. Uh, feel free to move on to the next tutorial if you need to make spruce up this phylogeny and make it look better.